Welcome back. Now, this is a case study from uh, uh, the great run of Kutch in Gujarat, Western India. And uh, this part is important because uh, this area or the region which falls away from the uh, one of the most seismically active region that is Himalayan belt sitting almost like uh, a thousand kilometer away. But nevertheless, it is close to one of the uh, reactive fault system in the west, that is uh, Chaman fault system. So we will we will discuss more when we get into the uh, more details of this. The photograph which has been shown here is from Dholavira, which is one of the uh, very famous ancient uh, Harappan site, and people have linked this also to the Indus Valley Civilization. So, why Kutch is so active and why Kutch need to be understood in terms of uh, uh, the deformation pattern and the earthquakes which are occurring there. So, as I told that this area is falling almost away from the Himalayan belt over here, but close to one of the fault system which is the again part of the the Himalayan origini that is Chaman fault system. And this part is your Makran subduction zone, which has also triggered tsunamis in the past in the 325 BC, another one was in 1945. Now, Kutch region here, which is a very small one, but has triggered a couple of earthquakes. So, if you go back into the history, so far what we have based on the uh, the records, historical records and uh, uh, the uh, geological or paleoseismic studies, we know that there were earthquakes in 18, uh, 1893, then 1668, 1890, 1845, 1956 and then 2001. The 1956 was 6.1, whereas the other earthquakes if you see they are all greater than 7 or it is they are greater than 7.5. And then as I told that there were two major subduction zone earthquake along Makran subduction zone sitting in west of uh, this region where we had an tsunami event in 325 BC another one 1945. This part I will not discuss, but yes, it is important to be uh, taken up here that there was an earthquake in in Latur in 1993 and magnitude was 6.2. Now, based on this earthquakes, what we have discussed in Himalaya, the Himalayan zone is sitting in 5 and also the Kutch, which is quite unusual to see that the small patch of the land here or the region in this whole uh, Indian subcontinent is sitting in zone 5 and this is because of uh, the area has experienced large magnitude damaging earthquakes in the past. This event of 1819 uh, which was been named as Alaband fault uh, or Alaband earthquake which occurred on the Alaband fault was quite unusual in terms of the uh, the damage as well as the landscape which got uh, changed after the event. If you look at the overall geomorphic and tectonic uh, framework of Kutch region, then what we see is that very beautiful uh, boundary here, there is a geomorphic boundary uh, between the, uh, the Thar and you are this side we are having uh, the, uh, the marshy land. So, I will quickly go into the details with what we have done uh, in this area. Okay. Now, this is an uh, area which is uh, sitting quite away from the main seismic uh, belt that is Himalayan arc and Kutch is sitting somewhere over here, it is quite far off. 
Nevertheless, it is close to the Chemin fault system, uh, which has been shown here, and then another subduction zone, the Makran subduction zone. Now, if we take uh, uh, the zonation map of India, then you will find that the Himalayan belt is in zone 5, pockets of Himalayan belt, and then we are having northeast sitting in zone 5, the Andaman Nicobar. We can understand that this part is sitting in zone 5 is because they are either clo close to the subduction zone and this is your collision zone. Now, why this cutch which is sitting so far and very small piece of land as compared to which we take in proportionate to the Indian subcontinent is having in zone 5 and why we are having so many earthquakes. So, when we started working here, we asked several questions to ourselves, to, uh, but to some extent, we were not able to get the complete, uh, all, all answers to our questions. Now, if you look at the historical earthquake um, in this region, it goes back into like, uh, there were uh, there was an earthquake in 19, uh, 18, 890, 80 somewhere, and then there was again, this was greater than 7.5, then you have uh, uh, following earthquake 1668, then you have another earthquake in 1819, then 1845, 1950, then we have 2001. This was 6.1, whereas rest are all greater than 7.5, but less than 8. Now, uh, if we if we consider this earthquakes or the data which we have based on the historical chronicles or the geological uh, signatures, it definitely there is a reason why we have put this in zone 5. So, here there are listed a few Indus, uh, there is an Indus earthquake 19, uh, 18, uh, 1668, 7 .8, 1819 Alabanda earthquake, which took place along the Alaband fault here. And then we are having another 1845, which was along this one, but this is again, uh, as I told that this is uh, uh, probably is a less one, but it is uh, earthquake, which has been recorded here. And this was 1956. Uh, the magnitude was not comp as high as 1819 and 2001. 2001 was in 7.7, 7.6 magnitude earthquake. So, this was less actually, it was not 8 uh, or 7.5 magnitude earthquake in 1845, but this was bigger one, this was quite. So, uh, what we did was that uh, I am not going to talk about this uh, event, but we have like uh, very good signatures of uh, um, this event uh, resulting into the change in the landscape and uh, uh, a river which used to flow through this, that river got disrupted. So, this river used to come here and then used to flow through the Kori Creek, but now we do not see that river. So, probably this uh, was the event 1819, which disrupted the uh, the channel of uh, Nara. So, that Nara channel, which is a tributary of Indus, used to flow through Kori Creek along back. Uh, so, uh, whether that that we can correlate that disruption purely to 1819 earthquake or uh, there were earthquake in the past, which also uh, in a sense affected the, uh, the change in the landscape over here. Now, Alabant, I will just Tell a small story here that the Alaban uh, uh, event was been named after uh, the the earthquake because it uh, resulted into the. We are not very sure that the 1819 uh, earthquake was alone responsible for the disruption of uh, the channel uh, which flowed through this area and through Kori Creek getting into the Arabian Sea. But now, at present, we do not see this channel anymore. 
Now the story behind this is that the Alabant, how the Alabant name came up. So this says the band of Allah. So in here uh, there is a beautiful pond uh, which got created after the displacement which was experienced on Alabant fault. So the land, if you take the uh, the cross section over here, then what you see is that the area has been uplifted and back tilted. So the river was flowing through this, got dammed up. So this is what they call as an Allah's band. So this is known as Allah band. So naturally, band of Allah, which resulted into the disruption of the channel. So no, no water is flowing across this uh, uplifted area. Now our aim was to understand that what exactly has happened in the past, whether these are the, are the only faults which are available or there are new, new more faults, active faults in this region. So after 2001 Bhuj earthquake, what we noticed was that there was there were a lot of uh, swam of earthquakes which have been uh, triggered in this area. Of course, this was the, uh, the rupture area, hence we, one can expect the aftershocks in this region. But at the same time, what we saw is that uh, there were few earthquakes with magnitude 5.6 uh, which took place in 2006 along the Gedi Fault and then, uh, so in particularly this region. Now, this rupture uh, is in the area where another fault, fault which lies is known as South Wagad Fault. So, we were interested in knowing that whether uh, uh, there is a seismic loading which probably has taken place similar to what we see in Himalayas in Kutch region also. So, because of this event which occurred on in between the, uh, the uh, the Kutch mainland fault and the South Wagad fault, whether this will trigger another event on South Wagad fault or not and whether the South Wagad fault is an active fault or not. So, this was also one, one aim of our study that whether the South Wagad fault is active, that was in question and how many paleo earthquakes have been triggered along South Wagad Fault, if at all there were events in this region. So, we started doing some uh, uh, detailed studies on, on this two faults, that is the Gedi Fault and the South Wagad Fault. So, in total if you look at uh, what we see is that uh, in last uh, 500 years, Kutch experienced several earthquakes uh, with magnitude uh, uh, 6 greater than equal to 6 and less than equal to 7.8. And these earthquakes are, as I was talking about, some of them are listed here. It is 1668 Indus Delta earthquake, 1819 Alabanth, 1956 and then 2001. And then historical data also suggests that there were, there were large magnitude earthquake in uh, uh, 800 to 1000 BC and our study what suggests that the active fault studies from Kutch mainland reveal that major faults mainly Katrol Hill fault and the Kutch mainland faults have ruptured in the, uh, uh, the, the, the during the quaternary period or maybe you can say in the recent time uh, displacing the quaternary succession. Now this falls are sitting somewhere here, this is Katrol uh, hill fault and this is Kutch mainland fault. So, these are the two faults which are also active and which have triggered the earthquakes in the past. We have practically uh, uh, done the, uh, uh, the active fault topographic studies along the Katrol hill fault, Kutch mainland fault, South Wagad fault, Gedi fault and Alaban fault. And from our interpretations, what we suggest is that all this falls starting from the, uh, this is south to the north, all this falls, you are having Katrol Hill Fault, Kutch Mainland Fault, then you are having South Wagar Fault, Gedi Fault, 
island belt fault we haven't uh, studied in detail then we are having a Laban fault all these faults are active and can produce large magnitude earthquake in near future now the question comes is that what happened in 2001 2001 did not rupture up to the surface so this suggests that probably the the the, the earthquakes which have ruptured the surface might be larger than 7.7 earthquake I am taking the magnitude of 2001 so we can infer that this uh, the uh, next events which are going to occur along the this active falls must be larger than this one so this poses lot of questions in our mind that what will happen in the in, in uh, next hundred years or in recent uh, coming years on in, in along this faults actually so this is the topography what we have in the uh, the south wagger but one thing which i would like to just uh, make it a uh, little bit uh, clear quickly that if you take the cross section like this okay and say this is north this is south then what uh, uh, we see uh, in terms of the fault uh, uh, faulting pattern is we have like if you start from south and of course we have the coastal region here then we have a landmass over here the hills okay. and then uh, we have so this is your south so we have like this okay. and then it goes like this another one then we have in between uh, the Gary, uh, South Wagad Fault and the Gady Fault, in between we have Basin here, and then we have uh, the Island Belt Fault, is something like that, and then we have the Alaban Fault. So, Alaban Fault is like that, like this, this here. But still, people are having different postulations for this or the this thing. So this we are having. This is your Alaban fault, which is. Uh, so otherwise, I what I can do is I can put another slide and try to explain you this one. If you start from south, then we have uh, this. Then we go like that. Then we have an uh, Gedi. Uh, South Wagad and Gedi Fault. Then we have an Island Belt Fault, and then we have this one is Alaban Fault. So this is your south, this is your north. So you are having this falls are going like that. Okay, movement along the fault. This is coming up here like this. This is coming up like that. And then the Island Belt Fault. And this is Alaban fault. So this is your Alaban fault. This one is your Island Bell fault. And this is your Gady fault. This one is South Wagad fault. And this one here, you are having the Bunny Basin. And this one is your Kutch Mainland mainland fault is your control hill fault. So, we have a configuration of the oppositely dipping faults. Now, this has happened basically because of the inversion tectonics. Now, you might be thinking that why I am I'm putting so much of geological and tectonic uh, a portion talking here because for hazard analysis we also need to understand that what is the dip of the fault and which side the fault is dipping 
because as we, we discussed in the previous lecture uh, about uh, the hanging wall and foot wall. So, if you are having this uh, as an reverse fault, maybe I can draw very much similar. For example, if you are drawing eleven fault, then then we have this block is moving up with respect to this one. Okay. So, this will be your hanging wall, this will be your foot wall. And in a simpler way, the hanging wall which will move during an earthquake will have higher ground acceleration. And if the earthquake is triggered here, this will be your focus, this will be your epicenter here. Earthquake will not take place here, because there is no fault for here. So, this is for example, if we take uh, this is your north, this is your south, then this is with the, the scenario with the uh, north dipping faults. But the scenario will be different for the south dipping falls. So, if you are having the thrust fault which is moved like that, okay. then this is your hanging wall and this is your foot wall. So, the things will be will differ from uh, if you if you have the different. So, when we talk about the, the hazard scenario and catch, we need to be extremely careful that which fault we are talking about and what is the configuration of the faulting uh, in that sense. Okay. So, this was in short what I want to and then this is applicable everywhere or uh, wherever you are studying the, the fault. So, so, what is that the dip? Okay in which direction it is dipping. So, that is important for us. So, if you uh, look at this, this part here like uh, uh, the south wagger, okay, then uh, what we see is that. Uh, so, we have south wagger which is uh, uh, showing uh, the scarp facing towards south and the Kutch mainland fault is showing the scarp which is facing toward north. So, if we quickly take the cross section here, what we see is that we have uh, from uh, north to south, and then we have north which goes like that, and then we are having the basin, and then we are having the catchment. So, this falls are dipping on either side. This is your north, this is your south, and this is your uh, this is your south forward fault and this is your catch mainland fault. So, the geology or uh, which you see here is that we are having the, uh, the Mesozoic and the Quaternary cover similarly over here and here also we are having Mesozoic and partly we also see the tertiary rocks. Geomorphologically if you look at then we are having and chain of islands. This is on Khadir Island, and on Khadir Island, this hosts the the famous Harappan site that is Dola Vira, and then we have Bela Island, Chorar Island, and then uh, Wagad Island, and this is connected or uh, with the uh, with the Kutch mainland uh, as part of small basin which is known as Bani or Samkhali Basin. So we did detailed study and mapping of. Uh, uh, the falls and the geomorphic uh, landforms which are attached or are associated with this and we identified a very um, like a prominent site uh, in terms of the active fault scarp and then dug the trench tried to look at the uh, the uh, paleo earthquake history uh, from this area so i'll quickly uh, take you uh, uh, like through the, uh, the 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 field which we did from Mahe area right up to the uh, Shivalakha area and very quickly show you the, 
at what uh, we now one thing which you can uh, easily make out is that these are the structures the geological structures which you can see here are all what we call anticlines okay and then some locations what we see is the elongated anticlines okay and the arrows which are been shown here are the arrows of the movement of the anticline so whenever there is there will be an rupture there will be an addition of the length here as well as the it will gain the height similarly this is uh, the uh, the plunging anticline which is moving in both directions and so if this this anticlines keep moving towards uh, one uh, like in either direction lateral movement what we say during the uh, during different earthquakes the time will come it will link up and these are the linkage segments which have been shown here so in himalaya also if you look at we we are having a smaller folds like this and like uh, but the time will come then this fall, folds will get linked up giving rise to a larger fold segments so these are moving in this direction this side notch is moving here like this this is what similar phenomena uh, of deformation we observed in even kutch so this will be a sort of a linkage area which has been shown here this is the linkage uh, point of two segments and slowly uh, this will grow this also testifies that yes of course there is a movement uh, which has been experienced by south wagad fault in the past so this was another important finding so we are just not jumping directly saying that okay this is an active fault and this is hazardous or not but we are also taking into consideration that what has happened in the past and similar things can uh, or the process will prevail in future also and and for sure that this region or the the south wagad fault must have hosted large magnitude earthquake in the past very much similar to or must be probably greater than uh, what we experienced in 2001 bhuj earthquake these are the examples which we see or these the signatures which we we, we see uh, in the deformed areas and these are the old rocks tertiary rocks which have been folded and this is the the scarp at mahe anticline which i was showing in the previous slide over here this is the the area at the mahe anticline and then further we are moving uh, to the next one uh, that is uh, close to wamka we see an uplifted terrace so south wagad fault which we have marked is running over here actually so if you open up the section across this you will be able to see the uh, the the displacement so these are the evidence of that so this area if we take the profile then it looks something like that so this uplift was not in the single event but this was resulted into by and uh, multiple events or multiple earthquakes and the height which we see here from this top up to the base here okay, is your cumulative height so multiple earthquakes so again it proves that this area has experienced earthquake in the past okay. this is another example of fault scarps uh, which were observed further ahead near halera and then we also looked at that uh, uh, small streams which are just having a few kilometer of the uh, the basin area or the watershed area have incised the the region or the the area uh, like it shows deep incision this is again an indication of uh, an sudden land level change because of the base level change because of the uplift you can see the incision of more than 2.5 meter or so it, and another uh, feature features which we see is the formation of the terraces along the river valley then in one place where uh, we found that this is the most uh, uh, was the most prominent area uh, to open up the trench so if you see the see the google picture here uh, this is the uh, the eastern nose of adhoi anticline which i was showing uh, in, the, in the previous slide 
So, this is the, the fold which is propagating in this direction. Now, taking an uh, advantage of what we, uh, we did in Himalaya, we also applied here, because this is again is an example of fold and thrust belt, very much similar to Himalaya, but this is on miniature scale, this is not at the magnitude what we see in terms of the, uh, the region, okay. the towering height of Himalaya, if you see here in Kutch is not the same. But yes, of course, I, I say that this is on the miniature scale. So, we applied the similar technique or the methods to identify the best site for trenching. So, this is Adhoi anticline which you see here, where we, uh, we identified the site and this was the section uh, which we, uh, we encountered in one of the, uh, the artificially dug trench by local people for agricultural or irrigation purposes. Okay. So, we found that there is an evidence of very young displacement in very uh, uh, young deposits and we decided that we will open up the trench here to identify the paleo earthquakes uh, which have occurred in uh, during the historic times. So, uh, uh, what I can do is I will stop here and we will continue in the next uh, lecture and try to discuss more about the interesting things about uh, the South Wagad fault and then we will also like to see whether the, uh, the South Wagad fault was responsible in uh, sort of an, it was whether it was a damaging earthquake or it was just an earthquake which did not affect the region. Okay. Thank you so much.